So there I was, getting the teapot ready for Wilfer and I, cause you know how we like to sip some tea on this channel from time to time, and I turn around for a couple of seconds to call Wilfer in the kitchen, and as I do that, he looks at me like, uh, Andre, you might want to turn around and check up on that James Charles tea, cause it's spilling all over the place. The beauty community has absolutely exploded in the last couple of weeks. There's probably thousands of videos on this topic, and everyone's jumping on it as soon as something new comes to light. But Wilfer and I have been watching from the shadows taking our time. You may have seen my previous video on the topic, but that was before things blew up to the proportion that they have at this point. That video treated the situation very much at a surface level and didn't include all of the details that we know now. This situation had been brewing for some time within the beauty community, but it became an internet sensation when Tati Westbrook made a 40 minute video exposing James Charles, making him lose almost 3 million subscribers overnight. His downfall was celebrated across the internet, Tati was hailed as the victorious champion and James's crown as the number one beauty guru was by default inherited by Jeffree Star. Then out of nowhere James pulled the biggest reverse card in history exposing Jeffree Star who pretty much was like I'm not playing this game anymore. And everybody who had initially jumped on Tati's boat was now like uh maybe James wasn't that bad after all. <laughs> this whole thing has been pure insanity. So for the purpose of encompassing the entire scope of this beef we're gonna take our time and tell the whole story in a multi-part series that breaks down the entire timeline, addresses every single detail, and tells everybody's point of view. The beauty community is so rich in drama and so fascinating to study. It's almost hypnotizing to any outsider looking in. It's got heroes and villains and kings and queens and people building up empires and backstabbings, empires crumbling. It's like Game of Thrones on steroids. Or like, I guess, vitamins. <laughs> I've just recently started to explore it more in depth, and it honestly feels like I'm reading Dante's Inferno, except there's a tenth circle of hell, which is the beauty community. But over here on this channel, we're doing our best to research every aspect of the situation at hand and deliver it back to you in a way that's digestible even for somebody who doesn't know any of the people involved. Now, with that out of the way, let's recap everything that led up to the social blade carnage of May 10th, 2019. James Charles came up on the beauty scene as a prodigy. He was very young, showing signs of ambition and intelligence beyond his years, and he quickly made himself noticed. His strategy, whether conscious or not, was pretty basic. Get associated with people who are more successful, learn from them, use their help and support to keep growing and get more and more established. And because he was so young and talented and showed so much potential, he quickly outgrew everybody around him in influence and relevance and took the crown as the number one beauty guru on the platform while he was still a teenager. Now, most of what we know about James Charles' origin story is from Tati's point of view based on the now deleted video by sister. But by filtering out the elements that have been disputed, I think we can get a pretty clear picture of what the truth actually is. What we know for sure, based on Tati's screenshots, is that she was talking to James in November 2016, when, according to Social Blade, he had around 300,000 subscribers. But she also mentions that they were in contact before CoverGirl, and cross-checking that with Social Blade shows that he must have had as little as 50,000 subscribers when he reached out to Tati, who at this point had over 2 million. Um, he contacted me through my DMs. He always told me that I was the reason that he wanted to get into makeup, that he was inspired to start his channel. And it was just nice to hear, to be honest. I was like, cool, like how can I help you? I made the choice that I was gonna help him. Like a lot of people online were crapping all over him and I had his back back then. It's also important to note that James came from a small town called Bethlehem. No, not that Bethlehem. The one in the state of New York. By this time he had moved by himself to California, leaving his parents back home on the East Coast. So this friendship with Tati morphed into somewhat more of a parental dynamic. His mother wasn't with him, so Tati, being almost 20 years older, sort of took her under her wing and assumed the role of a de facto mother. Now, Tati's husband's name is also James, so this can get a little confusing, but James Westbrook, according to Tati, happened to be a very knowledgeable businessman who, by extension, became sort of a business dad figure to James Charles. My husband ran an agency. He was the VP of motion pictures. He knows the industry through and through. He has built businesses and sold them. He is so insanely intelligent. Deals, contracts, business development. He's a master at it. And anytime that James would need help, he'd be like, dad, what should I do? And he'd come over and he'd be like, I don't like my manager. Will you manage me? And James is like, no, 
I'm not doing that. I don't do that anymore. But your family, how can I help you? My husband would spend hours on the phone, looking over contracts, getting him in a better position. He was making $90 a video. And because of me and my husband, he was making 2,500 immediately from a switch being flipped. So that's just like a small sample of some of the things that we've done for James Charles. You know how they always say you shouldn't mix friendships with business? Well, it seems like James Westbrook, Tati's husband, knew this. By setting a boundary and refusing to be James Charles's manager, he drew a line in the sand while still being very supportive as a friend. Well, it seems like for James Charles and Tati, that line in the sand was never drawn. And because of the age difference and this mother-son dynamic, he just took and took her love and support and she gave and gave everything she had. And what happened, according to Tati's narrative, is that he became an entitled spoiled brat. He never went through the conventional struggles of building up a YouTube channel, like uh, <clears throat> the rest of us peasants. In his case, Tati gave him valuable advice. She helped him with brand deals and opportunities worth millions and millions of dollars, which allowed him to just focus on the creative side of his craft. It's almost as if he played the game on easy mode, bouncing around with superpowers, leaving everybody behind walking at half speed. Now, I'm 27 years old, and if somebody were to give me millions of dollars like that, my moral compass would get all fucked up too. I mean, hell, give me a $5 Walmart coupon and you'll have to refer to me as sir from now on. But there's a certain path of ups and downs that you need to go through in order to be able to handle success in a healthy way. At 27 years old, I don't think I'm ready to handle all of that. I can't imagine what it did to his ego at 17, 18 years old. If you watch Game of Thrones, you're familiar with the character of Prince Joffrey. I'm not talking specific spoilers here for anybody who hasn't watched the show yet, but Joffrey is a spoiled child who inherited a kingdom on a silver platter with nobody to keep him in check. And he became one of the most evil and hateable characters ever written. In a video, Tati presents James almost like a Joffrey type personality who saw himself above the beauty community, a king who could do whatever he wanted without consequences. He got into controversy after controversy after controversy and was even proud of the fact that it all just raised his popularity. Now, the obvious takeaway from Tati's 40 minute video was the sexual predatory behavior, all the hitting on straight guys. That's what most people took and ran with to take James Charles down. But I feel like it's equally important to focus on the more subtle arguments that she made against him. So he was popping off online about exposing the beauty community and doing a docu-series and I was like, no. How entitled do you have to be to think that you have it rough? You are a 19 year old millionaire. So after hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of talk, he arrived at the decision to not do it. I was like, it's gonna be like the downfall of your career, don't do it. Like don't expose the community because you're part of the community. Like, do you think you're better than everyone? Cause you're not. I also don't think that it's cool to publicly shame a woman who paved the way. This is all in reference to Marlena Stell, one of the OG beauty vloggers on YouTube who has had over a decade of experience on the scene. And last year she was approached by Netflix to do a documentary from a beauty brand CEO point of view. At which point James Charles went on a Twitter rant about how Marlena was bad at making business decisions and how Netflix shouldn't listen to her but instead they should approach him because he knows better. She tried her best to defuse the situation and even continue the conversation with him in private. But it looks like he just pushed her away and disregarded her attempt to make peace. Tati then had to talk some sense into James Charles and make him understand that he's too young and too new in the beauty industry that he does not in fact know better than all of these people with over a decade of experience over him. Because he was so successful and so young, it must have felt like he was some sort of a chosen one. And just like he himself has admitted since, all of that success had gone to his head. And I think by this point Tati had started to realize that the wide-eyed kid with 50,000 subscribers she had met at first was no longer there. That everything she had given him had enabled him to become a spoiled millionaire with a god complex. Tati felt like she had created a monster. Now, was there perhaps some envy in the middle of it? Did Tati feel like because she had helped him so much, he owed her more than he gave in return? Maybe. Things get blurry around here. And we haven't even addressed all the predatory allegations she made about him, all the supposed straight guys that have come out with stories against James Charles. Which ones are legitimate? Which ones are made up or exaggerated? 
exaggerated. And where does Jeffree Star fall into this equation? There's so much more to pick apart. There's always multiple sides to a story, and in this case particularly, there needs to be a careful analysis of all sides, because everything has been absolutely chaotic around here lately. It's really interesting to analyze all of this. I, I think this is a historical event, and we're gonna pick it all apart, so stick around for part two coming up. In the meantime, hop on over to Instagram, follow me over there. We're holding contests and challenges all the time. We're giving away Amazon gift cards, all that juicy stuff. So make sure to follow me over there to stay in the loop. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again with part two of the James Charles saga.